Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday the 24th of September 2021. We've got a couple of stories today and then we're going to go move on to preview of tomorrow's game. Um, now, this was from newsatdaily.co.uk today. Talking about Millwall boss on approaching 100 games. As not enough forest in new era with, era with latest manager. So, yeah, we're playing Forest tomorrow and they've sat Chris Hewitt because they are second bottom of the league, which when Derby County are bottom of the league, be on points deduction means you're technically bottom of the league on merit, but not on uh, technicality. So they're not doing too well and they fired Chris Hewitt. Now... So, let's have a read of this and see. So, Mill Boss Garrett is approaching 100 games in charge, but his focus is on, is on improving results rather than reflecting on that milestone. Rail oversees 98th Lions game and Nine of Forest is Saturday, and it's the manager who's taking charge of his first after Steve Cooper was appointed to replace Chris Uton this week. So, it's only so they're going on about 100 games. Now, will he even get to 100 games? If he loses the next two, if he loses against Forest and Bristol City, will he be out the door? Uh, now I doubt it because um, there were a um, situation when he probably could have been fired earlier than this. But uh, I don't know, after that Bristol City game on Wednesday, if uh, the fans go a bit uh, do lally and uh, start going, uh, calling for route to be sacked see he won't get to 100 games will he he'll be 99 and out but let's hope it doesn't go that way because uh i don't know it's uh it's not good for millwall unless we got a decent manager lined up but how many of them are around uh so rarat's first game was a 2-0 win over stoke city in october 2019 he has led the side to consecutive top half finishes in the championship. But Millwall have started this season slowly and although they are unbeaten in four league games, they have only won once this season and have eight points from eight games compared to 15 at the same time last season. Cooper is Forrest's 14th full-time appointment in the last 10 years. Rowett is the Lions' fifth permanent boss in over 14 years. Rowett was asked if he would uh, reflect on a century of games in charge. Anybody in management, particularly in the championship, but at any level of managers, to stay in a job for 100 games first and more foremost has done okay, Rowett said. I think that's down to the great work the staff are doing, but also testament to the club and the stability that's around the club. There's a big belief around Millwall that if you get that stability, you've got a chance of being successful. But look, the pressure at a club like Forest is perhaps slightly more than it is at Millwall in terms of what the expectation is. When you won the European Cup, for example, it was always uh, that in the back of people's minds. But I'm pleased to get nearly 100 games here. I like to hope there are many more, but when you've started the season like we had, the focus is to improve results immediately rather than worry about how long you've been somewhere or are going to be somewhere. Uh, Uton was sacked after a 2-0 defeat to Middlesbrough left Forrest winless at the foot of the table. Rowett added, I was sad to see Chris go because he's such a really good guy. A brilliantly experienced manager. Surprised? I've been in the championship for a long time. I've been in management for a while. I don't think you've ever surprised in football when the results have not been as good as you would like. You always know there is an inevitability about anyone's job, regardless of which division or how much experience they've got. Chris is a top manager, and I'm sure he will bounce back somewhere and do his usual, which is be successful. Who knows? Who knows? I won't be so sure about that. Um, when you lose it, you lose it fast. And it doesn't really come back. Um, so we also had this story today. It's from London News Online. And talking about Conor Mahoney. So is contract situation an extra incentive for Conor Mahoney? Mill boss route and winger starting prospects. Colin Mahoney is set to get another chance to cement a Mill starting spot on Nine of Forest tomorrow 
with manager Gary Rat happy if his contract situation proves extra incentive to do well. The 24-year-old winger is due to be a free agent at the end of the season, but only impressed in Wednesday's 2-0 EFL Cup loss to Leicester City. And the former Blackburn, Birmingham and AFC Bournemouth attacker pitcher uh, above looks likely to make a first championship start of the campaign at the city ground tomorrow with Jed Wallace and Shea Yojo both doubts due to illness. <coughs> Asked if Mahoney might find his contract situation a further motivation to do well, Rout replied, I hope so. He's a great lad and a really proper popular member of the squad. All we've really needed is for him to match that talent with the endeavour, drive and desire. It's probably a bit unfair to say that he hasn't. He hasn't had that many opportunities. He's almost all, he has almost had to force his way into the team. Connor has got the ability, but ability in a sport is only one thing. He was really good on Wednesday night. There was one moment in the first half where he tracked back the length of the pitch to make a tackle. That is the type of thing uh, you need to do if you want your team to win games. Rowell is still limited in his options for the Forest fixture of Mason Bennett missing out against the Foxes. Murray Wallace played against the Premier League side despite a slight calf niggle. Dutchman Mikkel Keftenbeld was not a risk. Striker Benekafobi featured for 20 minutes. The Stoke City only missed three games with a knee injury. Benick is such an important player for us that we've got to get it right, said Rao. It was about gauging his knee. He had an injection and had it aspirated to get the fluid out. He had two weeks of not doing anything then. It was a little bit of rehab and training to see how the knee responded. So far, it's responded pretty well. He probably took the safe option against Leicester and drifted out wide where there was a little bit more space for him to get through the last 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> so, so they had those those two stories uh, today, and then, um, not much else really going on in terms of uh, news involving Mill Football Club, uh, other than preview of tomorrow's game. So let's jump into that. This is from UFC.co.uk. Uh, Mill travelled to Nottingham Forest in Skybet Championship on Saturday afternoon, kick off 3 pm. The Lions bowed out the Carabao Cup at the third round stage on Wednesday night with defeat to Premier League outfit Leicester City at the den, but now returned to bread and butter of the league against Steve Cooper's side, managing his first game in charge of the Tricky Trees. Sean Hutchinson, George Evans, and Ben Ecophobia all returned to starting 11 against the Foxes and will be in contention for a place in Gary Rout's lineup. Whilst the likes of Bartos, Biakowski, Scott Malone, and George Savile, who were all unused subs in midweek, may return. Shea Yojo, meanwhile, could be back with the squad for the trip to the sit ground, whilst Jed Wallace will miss out through illness. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Uh, the Lions will be back by around 1,300 fans this weekend, but if you aren't one of them, then audio match passes on IFO are on sale. Whilst international subscribers will be able to watch the action on iFollow. Stuck for something to do before kickoff? Listen to episode 2 of uh, season 2 of Wall Talk with uh, legendary Lions keeper Brian King here. I believe that's available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, I think. Um, well, there you go, Jed Wallace is out. Confirmed. Shay Yojo might be on the bench. Um, Benekophobi. His knee hasn't blown up again. So it will be interesting to see the team we put out. Um, to try and win that game against a team that is bang in trouble at the bottom of the league. So, moving on. Now, this is the historical record of. Um, Mill versus Forest head to head, and I've sorted it into uh, Forest home, Mill away, and first one of them was in 1909 in the FA Cup, and we lost three on one. And then we've lost quite a few games up at the City Ground in the 1930s, the 1940s. And then the 1970s, of course, they were, they were, that's when they were doing quite well. We actually won. So we had from 1948 to 1990, a run of a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 league games where we got, we, we got defeated 
nine defeats in a row and one League Cup visit in 1973 where we actually won 3 1 in the middle of that. So, not doing too well in the early history there. But something switched, and in the 1993, so Forest obviously come off the bubble, wasn't doing too well. Um, 1993, I imagine that's, that's when they were in the Premier League for its first season, I think, and then they got relegated. So that's probably the, that season they got relegated. We beat them 3 1. That seems quite um, a popular score of, of for us, scoring three goals up there, especially in a uh... then uh, we played them in. We keep playing them in the League Cup. So we played them in the League Cup in 1994, one two nil. So we had three wins in a row after of nine nine league games without with um, nine league games. All, all defeats with one cup win in the middle of them then we go three and three on the spot then we have two draws and another win so we have six games where we go up there and don't lose not bad and then we have uh, so we have a couple of defeats in a row then a draw then another defeat well, one thing that you get in these games is goals there's always a lot of goals quite a few um, so the last three games up at Forest, last season we lost 3-1. So it's four goals in that game. Season before, 3-0. That was, that was the last game um, with fans before COVID interrupted the season. Um, and we won 3-0. And then before that in 2018, 2-2 draw. So four, four goals in that game. Um, so it seems over the years there's been quite a few goals in these these fixtures. So historically we haven't done too well, but recent history, not too bad, not too bad. Um, we can win up there. It's not not impossible. When you compare that with games at the Den, we've been slamming them from from 1929 onwards. So. Games at the Den, first one was in 1929, and you have to go all the way down to 1970. All these games here, all these games, go down to 1976 before that they beat us at the Den. That is incredible. How many games is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 16 games they travel down to the den over spanning friggin 50 years or so and they didn't win once then they win in 1976 and then they win again they have another spell where they don't win in four games then they win in 22 2002 um and then look they very rarely win at the den. We always beat them at the den. Um, they've only won one, two, three, four. They've only won four times out of all these games, which must be going on to like thirty or so games. That's insane. That is an incredible record against uh, Nottingham Forest at the den. But the other way. Now it started off with. They had the, the mark on us, but uh, recent years, like I was saying, we have been winning up there and we have been drawing, so the result tomorrow could be anything, but what will it be? Now, skysports.com, David Prime, his predictions. What does he say? Where do we... So, let's scroll down, because I'm sure we're all the way down the bottom. And nearly, we're nearly the last team. And he reckons it's going to be Nottingham Forest 2, Millwall 0. Um, maybe he's probably basing that on Jed Wallace not being available. Um, so, I'm 
the Swansea game was the first game where we failed to score. Um, then we did it again against Leicester. We failed to score against Leicester, and obviously Wallace didn't play in that. Um, so he thinks we're going to fail to score again due to a lack of Jed Wallace, and Jed Wallace has been creating, being um, creating every, m most of what we're doing. So. And if he's not there, who's that going to fall to? Is it going to fall to Colin Mahoney, like the, the story said earlier? Will it fall to Scott E. Malone? Um, will it fall to Jules Savile? Because these are the creative players. Like We have strikers up front, but they huff and puff. And they don't really do anything. No, Matt Smith does, but he needs people to run off of him. So... Um, We could fail to score, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we'll get at least one goal. Surely, the way we're playing and attacking, um, got to get at least one goal. Um, okay, let's move on now to whoscored.com. Well, their predictions, so uh, they got probable lineups, but that really doesn't mean anything these days um see so they've got mason bennett in in and he's not he it's highly unlikely to be starting they've got even got jed wallace in they don't know what they're talking about um uh, let's scroll down what do they say so you've already seen it there let's go through the match facts norton and forest have lost their last five home matches they've lost five home matches in a row in the championship in the league that is uh mill withdrawn their last three matches in the championship um yes that is true uh coventry swansea and wba world boxing association uh mill have been drawing at both half time and full time in their last three matches ah have we now okay so we were drawing and drawing at heart you know, throughout the whole game uh, Nottingham Forest have conceded at least two goals in the last five home matches. So not only do they have they lost the last five home matches, they've conceded at least two goals in each of those last five home matches where they've been defeated. Uh, Nottingham Forest have no wonder the gears have got sacked. Uh, Nottingham Forest have seen over two and a half goals in the last three home matches against Millwall in all competitions. Yeah, a lot of goals, a lot of goals in the Forest Millwall games. Um, but there have been under two and a half goals scored in Mills' last three games. Uh, 1 1, a 0 0, and a 1 1. So, what do they say? Nottingham Forest finally got their season up and running last weekend with a deserved 2 0 win on the road against Huddersfield. The Reds have appointed highly rated manager Steve Cooper, who guided Swansea to back to back playoff finishes. Millwall responded well last time out against Victor Giacchiris. Um, put Coventry in front of Daniel George Savile hitting back less than 15 minutes later. Mill couldn't push for the win that day with the London Club now having drawn three league games in a row. And they go for the fourth. Nottingham Forest won. Mill won. <laughs> Gary draw it. Um, the fans will not be happy with that. Um... Even though it probably would be better than the, it would be better, of course, better than a defeat. But I, I would imagine this, it depends on the situation that we draw. Cause we, we always end up trying to defend, concede, and then start to attack and then score. And you're like, why didn't you start to attack earlier? And then maybe we could have scored, and then maybe we could have won. It's always um, reactive. It's not proactive. It's reactive. So, if we get a draw, depending on how it happens, but the fans, I'm sure, will really not be happy with four draws in a row. And then we got Bristol City. If we draw that or lose that, it's we'll go around and get to 100 games because that's going to be pressure. The pressure will drop. 
So, match forecast over there on the right hand side. Mill will score a long shot. Oh, I wonder who's going to. I wonder who's going to do that. Mill will be showing a high number of cards, of course. Mill will dominate in the air. Mill will score from a set piece situation. Um, probably with the Malone corner. Um, uh, maybe, maybe. Um, so they go for a one-one. Um, let's see. So here you go. Last six matches away, Forest. Two wins for Forest. Three wins for Millwall. One draw. So yeah, we've got the uh bit of the upper round. Nine goals for us. Seven goals for them. And uh, nine yellow cards, eight yellow cards. Okay. Um, okay. So here we are on the table. They have. They are in twenty third position in the relegation places. They won one game against Huddersfield. That was their last that last game out. And I believe. Super Stephen Reed was in charge of that game. Um, former Millwall man Stephen Reed. Um, so actually, it looks pretty similar to us when you look at goals for and goals against. Eight and eight and ten for Millwall, seven and twelve for them. So those draws are keeping us up. Um. Where are we at? Uh, da, 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 da. So, they lost to Wolves heavily in the cup 4 0. So, they didn't get, um, so they want, they didn't have to play midweek in the cup like we did. So, that might be a factor, there, especially with the injuries. They might have a bit of the fitness edge on us. Um, Maybe that will show at the end of the game. Especially if the substitutions Gary Draw it makes is uh not the best. Um Yeah. So they failed to score against Middlesbrough. They scored one against Cardiff at home. They scored they only got one one against Derby in the big big um that is a big Derby game for them. Not because it's Derby, but they're rivals, um, geographical rivals. They went away to Stoke and, and didn't uh, score a goal. Um, yeah. It's a weird one, isn't it? It's a weird one. Um, let's have a look at the uh, team characteristics. So they attack down the wings, create chances for individual skill. Um, this is, compare that to mule strengths, and then you compare weaknesses to weaknesses. So their weaknesses are aerial jewels, and our strengths are aerial jewels. So what do you think the chances of Matt Smith starting are? <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, if he does, or if he doesn't. Um, If, okay. Um, styles they play with width. They take long shots. They attack down the right and the left. Playing in the first half, non-aggressive. Okay. Um. Indeed. So, the time has come. Stop the waffling, and to get a prediction out of me. If we draw another game, it's going to be a bit of a piss take, isn't it? Um, we haven't got Jed Wallace, so it doesn't look like there's anyone even remotely capable of filling in and matching what Jed Wallace does for us. Um, maybe Ben Thompson, but as in terms of endeavour and effort and constant uh, harrying. He doesn't really give up 
but he doesn't have the same skill level as Jed Wallace. Um, Connor Mahoney, uh, not really. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a, have to be a bit old school. Belt and braces, Matt Smith, uh, with probably a phobie. Uh, maybe not a phobia, maybe a phobia off the bench, but Matt Smith definitely starting. Um, and you just try and hit balls up to him. And have, who are you going to have playing off of him though? Uh, maybe Ben Thompson, I don't know. Um, it's highly dependent on the squad that gets picked, but... I'm going to go, especially if Hutch Hutchinson starts. If Hutchinson starts, this is my prediction. I think it's going to be not in the forest zero, mill one. That's what I think. I think with Hutchinson back in the team, we can keep a clean sheet. And. I think we'll win one nil. So that's what I think. Um, anyway, that's it. That's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.